This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here's a first. We've seen Amazon put out some tablets, a little TV set-top box. This time, it's the Amazon Fire Phone. Now, we're going to look at it now. So this is the Amazon Fire Phone. Doubtless, there's plenty of reviews of this on the net that you're going to find. So let's get the salient things out of the way first, or the things that are particularly unusual about this phone. The 3D Perspective, or UI. So say here right in the lock screen, notice how this picture moves around. Now there's another trick too. It has a bunch of front facing little cameras or infrared cameras that keep an eye on you. So if you're in front of this and you do this, it works. And I am actually sitting in front of it right now while I'm holding the phone. If you're not in front of it, it's going to stop doing those animations. So that's kind of interesting. So it's going to look at where you are and try to keep the perspective relative to where you are in front of the phone. So. Is it a gimmick? Yeah, it is. Is it a fun gimmick? Sure it is. Do we need this in every phone from here on out? No, not really so much. I don't know. But there are a couple of games that take advantage of it. Now the other feature is called Firefly. So it uses the rear camera to identify stuff. So one of the neat things is if say you're watching a TV show, you can actually aim it at the TV show and get information about the show using IMDB, which Amazon owns. That's the same thing they've been using on Kindle Fire and Fire HDX tablets to give you information about stuff you're watching on Amazon Prime Video. You can also use it on movies. You can use it on products because, aha, uh -huh, this is a phone by Amazon that wants you to shop. So basically they want the world to be your in-person shopping salon, and then you're supposed to go to Amazon and buy it cheaper there. That's what they would like. Um, I will refrain from making value judgments about the whole proposition and just demo that feature. Press and hold the camera button to launch Firefly, and then you can see the little swirly little snow-like dots where it's trying to recognize something. And here it is. It had gotten it right away. It plays that little sound, so that's exactly the right product right there. So there's information about it. Now it's shop on Amazon. You can one click buy it if you're not too careful there. You can delete this from your history if you're embarrassed by what you've just scanned. It does an okay job. Now on the home screen, because this is not just regular pure Android, it's based on Android, it shows you the last things you scanned. So I scanned a book of poetry there. It was dead on, right? And that book was printed about 15 years ago, so that's pretty good. It's not even a current book cover anymore. Now see the kettle potato chips right here. I had scanned those, and they were the original flavor in a blue bag. Somehow it decided I, I wanted the hot sauce flavored one. So it's not perfect. It does a couple of oddball things like that. So there are the two features, basically. you got the Amazon Firefly here, and you have the dynamic 3D perspective that set this apart from other phones currently on the market. Okay, so we've seen the two special features here. What is it? Otherwise, it is a smartphone running... Fire OS 3.5, that's what Amazon calls their heavily skinned and customized version of Android. Underneath this is Android Jelly Bean, not the latest KitKat. I don't really think that makes a huge amount of difference given how heavily Amazon skins this. This does not run Google Play Store apps and content. By default, it runs all of Amazon's app stores. Press the home button, you can see the launcher of all the applications here. You're going to see a whole lot of Amazon apps on here, along with things like contacts, calendar, your camera application, anything that you want to download. So if you want to get content on this, you're going to use Amazon's App Store, which has a pretty wide selection of, of apps. I have to admit that when I got this phone, all the ones I want to use, like Skype was there, uh, Grocery IQ for shopping, lots of apps on here. You've got Flipboard, you've got Instagram. So, so how about all of the Amazon-related apps on here? Like I said, we got Kindle over here. Look, we have Audible, too, labeled as audiobooks right here. And here we have the UI for Audible right here. I like it a little bit better than on other mobile devices. Of course, Amazon, well, it's their own phone. They can do whatever they want with it, and they've done a pretty nice job right here. And a big shout-out to Audible because they are the sponsor for this video with 150,000 downloadable titles available, books, periodicals, you name it. Great way to actually spend some time when you're working out in the gym and you don't want to realize how much your biceps are actually burning. That's one of my favorite things. So here we have a book that I've downloaded. Now that gets into the fact that we have stereo speakers down here and Dolby Digital Plus Audio. Now, Amazon typically has done a very good job with the Fire products and audio, and the speakers on this are better than average. Great for listening to audiobooks, obviously. And also the headphones are pretty good too. They come in the box with this, and using a, a really nice pair of headphones hmm, costs about 100 bucks or so. I really have to say that I enjoy gaming and listening to audiobooks on this. 
So for those of you who are into Amazon's ecosystem, say you're into Audible particularly, well, obviously you can read a fine literary book like Lolita right here, which is an interesting, well, visitation into morality and other things like that. Or you can choose any other title you want. And in fact, for you new, new people who sign up, we have a deal for you. You can go to audible.com forward slash tech review to get a free book and try it out. So Amazon ecosystem right here. We have our Audible. What else do we have? We have Kindle. I think most people are pretty familiar with Kindle. You might have a standard e-ink Kindle. You might have a Fire tablet. So for those of you who actually enjoy that experience and just want to have your books in your pocket, which is attractive, yes, you can do that with your iPhone. You can do that with an Android device because the Kindle app is available. The whole idea with this is it just makes everything pretty seamless. It just downloads stuff from the cloud. No fuss, no muss. You log in once with your Amazon Prime ID on this and or your straight Amazon account and all your stuff is available to you. With a typical interface like here, you see device versus cloud. So everything that's available on the cloud versus device. That holds true for your apps, holds true for your books. And how does it look? This is a 720p screen. Uh, this is poetry, so the line breaks are a little bit weird here. But it's very sharp and clear. I have to say the screen on this is actually really nice. Much as I'm torn about a phone that's really designed to get you shopping more than anything else, it has some real nice merits. The screen would be one. It's a very nice, slightly warm display, very bright, up to 500 nits, 590 nits of brightness, rather. Good clarity. And 720p gives you over 300 ppi pixel density. So this is not a display where you're going to see, well, the pixels in individual words. So quite good for that. For those of you who are into the Kindle ecosystem, you're going to love this again. We have Amazon Prime Video on here. In fact, one of the, the widgets on the home screen, if you press the home button, you can switch between those, will actually take you to whatever you've been watching most recently. And it'll take you through a bunch of apps, too. Eventually, we'll get there. We've got a phone dialer. We've got our email. And this is what the email looks like, by the way. Basic email client, pop, HTML5, that sort of thing. Prime Music also on board here. Now that has about a million free tracks for streaming if you want, but the funny thing is out of those million tracks, I haven't found that much that I'm actually all that interested in. So here we are with the latest thing I've been watching on Amazon Prime Video. By the way, for those of you who don't have a Prime membership, uh, which costs $99 a year, right now if you buy the phone, you get a $99 Prime membership. And that helps offset the price of the phone a bit because honestly, for a phone that is decent, not super high specs, it's priced like a flagship anyway. $199 for the 32 gig on contract, $399 for the 64 gig on contract, $650 for the phone without contract, 32 gig, and it's going to be $100 additional if you want the 64 gig. So this costs as much as your Samsung Galaxy S5, your iPhone 5S, your LG G3, and that's the challenge here. With Amazon, they've always done well by selling neat stuff for less when it comes to their own hardware and making it easier to consume their services. Certainly this phone makes it easy to consume their services, as you've seen, but it's not doing it any cheaper. Usually they kind of subsidize the cost of the hardware because they're going to get you into their ecosystem and make lots of money when you actually buy stuff with them. So not the case here. And I have a feeling the phone's going to take off much more than it will at introduction if they do drop the price, say, to $99. Certainly, if it was free on contract, I think a lot of people would probably pick this up because it's a pleasant enough phone to use. Fast, fluid UI, and it introduces a few things like gestures, and I think people are going to actually enjoy those. Now, the thing is with the gestures, it works most of the time, but not all the time. So gestures here. If you want to swipe in from either side, you can do that. You can swipe in and bring in your menus from off screen. And any application you're in, this is sort of like the equivalent of the Android menu key right here. It's going to bring up any options. Now, since we're just in the launcher, basically, it's just going to show you everything you can do, which you can see right here. Your books, your newsstand, your audio books, your documents. You can upload stuff to the Amazon Cloud Drive so you can have all any document type that you want available that the phone can read. Or you can do it gesture-based. You do a flick like that. And then you do another flick and it should put it away. But, you know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It does depend, again, on you being in front of the phone so it uses all those little front-facing cameras, uh, you know, so it wakes up even when I wave my hand so that it knows what you're doing. And if you just swipe that way, it just tells you anything that you need to know. If there's calendar items, what the weather is. Yes, it really is 100 degrees here today. That's just not so great, but that's the way it is in Texas. And another swipe back, and there it is. Now the phone also has motion scrolling, and let's go back in the Kindle app so we can see that it works on web pages as well. 
works even here. You see how I'm moving the phone and it's scrolling. This is the best controlled motion scrolling I've seen. This is something that I actually do use. And here's an example of motion scrolling working in a web page. This is our review of the HP ZBook 15 that I'm looking at right now in Mobile Tech Review. And you, you see how well controlled that is. It's not flying everywhere like, well, in certain Samsung Galaxy products. This is actually very usable and I like it quite well. So there's a few things that the phone does well. Getting back into the Kindle application and using motion, you could again swipe or you can do this. And here's x-ray. Here's information about stuff that's in the current book. So there's a lot of nice little touches here for usability. And I don't think it's really terribly hard to learn swiping in from either side or doing the, the twitch of the wrist if you want to, certainly at all. Right now, web browsers, not so much. Of course, the, the Fire Phone versus the Kindle Fire HDX tablets is pretty new on the market, so developers are probably going to be customizing some of their apps to make sure they run on the small screen. Bunch of different file managers, very important, very important indeed. If you want to sideload apps, like an Android phone, it has a setting to allow sideloading of apps. That's for you more advanced people who know what that means and know how to get an app off of another device, your, your phone or your tablet, and then you transfer them via USB to this phone here so you can install them. I don't think that's the target market. This is a phone that competes more probably with the iPhone. It has a very simple to use but playful kind of UI. It's fast, it's fluid. In fact, I'm pretty impressed with the speed of this relative to Kindle Fire HD and HDX tablets. It took a while for Amazon to actually get those fluid. In part, it helped when they start moving to more modern CPUs. Speaking of which, this runs the quad-core Snapdragon 800 at 2.2 gigahertz with Adreno 330 graphics. So pretty close to your current Android smartphones there in terms of internals, what it's got inside there. We're up to the Snapdragon 801 on other competing Android flagships, but that's a pretty small difference. 2 gigs of RAM available with 32 or 64 gigs of storage. Not expandable. There is no SD card slot on this guy. In terms of the app drawer, it's just normal scrolling right here. If you want to get to settings right there with the usual Android style notifications as well, and complete set of settings is right here. A lot more settings than you'll see on some Kindle Fire tablets right there. So pretty much everything that you want is there. Keyboard, as always, Amazon does a good job with the keyboard. You do have to switch using a button to go between numbers and letters, but other than that, very easy haptic feedback right there. So a fairly good job doing there. And anytime you want to go back, say you're in an application, you just swipe up. So say we're in the Kindle app right here, I'm in that book, and I want to go back to the main book page. Honestly, pretty simple, pretty easy to use. The 3D effect, I don't know if that's so useful. You can see it going right there. Using the four cameras right there, 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 there on the front to figure out where you are to maintain that perspective. That is a feature you can turn off if you don't like it, if it gives you motion sickness, anything like that. There are a couple of games that they preload that do take advantage of the 3D perspective. And we'll look at Monkey Buddy, one of those games. So here we are in, well, Monkey Buddy, obviously a game designed more for children. See how as I turn it, our perspective and what I can see in the scene Changes, I can tap on the bongos, can pet the monkey, all that sort of thing. So there's obviously utility for games here. But mostly at this point, still just a fun little gimmick. So how about calling? Then this is what the calling screen looks like. You have access to your contacts, to your voicemail right here, call history, pretty much standard stuff right here. Call quality on the phone compared to other AT&T phones, it's really, it's excellent for incoming voice. Really loud and clear, louder than average, that's nice. Outgoing call quality, our call recipient said we sounded a little bit lacking in dynamic range, a little bit flat, not impossible to understand by any means, but not nearly as good as the incoming call quality on this. So how about the basics, the apps like calendar and contacts? Well, here's what the calendar application looks like. You have quick access to today, creating a new one. Very easy to sync to Google. After you put your Amazon email address that you use and password in here for your Amazon buying stuff purposes, you can add other accounts. So if you put in your, your Gmail address, it can pull not just your email, but your contacts, your calendar, all that stuff. So there's your month view. We have a day view right here. We have a list view. Pretty much standard stuff right there. Contacts, again, pretty straightforward here. We It uses a first, first, last, initial system, so that's what an individual content look, contact looks like. 
can add folks to your VIP list if you want to do it on that. So again, fairly straightforward stuff. Now, one thing about the phone, you can give individual ringtones to each person on the phone. You can set VIP contacts. So even if the phone is silenced, you'll, you'll know if they're calling you, but there is no scheduled quiet time. And that's one thing that I really miss. If you hit the volume button on the side here, you can see you can silence for three hours. You can have silent mode, vibrate mode, or ringer on, but there is no scheduled quiet time. One thing that I miss on other phones. Other than that, it's pretty much a very complete operating system compared to other smartphone operating systems when they first shipped. I have to say they've got all the bases taken care of on this one. As you've so far likely noticed, this at points resembles Android. The app drawer right here, the notification system obviously are quite Android. The settings options are pretty much the stuff that you're going to find on Android. Amazon adds a couple of things, you know, their parental controls, that sort of thing. If you're an Android diehard and you love Android, this is probably not the phone for you because you're not getting straight Android here. Sure, you could root this. Yes, you can sideload apps if you want to get some stuff from Google Play. You can even get Google services on here, though. The drawback right now to doing that, and I've tried doing that, is that you have to get all those little error messages that slow down the phone about Google Play services and stuff like that. So honestly, if you want this to be a straight Android phone, it's not the answer. If you're interested in a phone that's pretty simple and easy to use and has store ecosystems that you trust, not unlike the iPhone, but for whatever reason, you're not an iFan, this is possibly a good phone for you. If you've been using Android and just like your everyday casual user, you're really not in love with Android, it's okay. It just kind of does the job. Then this could be the phone for you as well. In terms of the other features that are inside the phone, well, we have the usual dual band Wi-Fi 802.11ac, Bluetooth 3.0, oddly, not 4.0, though I think a firmware update may bring us up to 4.0. We have a GPS with GLONASS on here. Like I said, 720p screen, that's quite bright. And the design, let's talk about that. Now, this is a matter of personal preference. This is a glass back. I, we have seen that before, haven't we? Funny thing, on the iPhone, for example, also on the Nexus 5, it's Gorilla Glass. It's nice enough looking, it's easy to clean, I'm not against it. Rubbery sides make it easy to grip. It's not the world's most imaginative design, nor is it ugly. I leave the decision up to you as to how you feel about the aesthetics of it. Obviously, just one button control there to bring you home and to switch between the widget UI and the app drawer. Our USB 2.0 port right here for copying content to the phone and also for charging the phone right there, flanked by those stereo speakers. And if you do plug this into your computer, it acts like a regular Android phone. It's just going to mount as a mass storage device under Windows, so you can copy stuff back and forth, and you'll use Android file transfer if you're using a Mac. Mac. Up top here, we have our headphone jack and the power button. Volume controls are on the side. More often, we see them on the other side of the phone. I don't think it really matters too much. And this is the dedicated camera button. You press that, it launches the camera. Press and hold, it launches that Firefly feature. And here's our SIM card slot. And guess what? This uses a Nano Slim, like the iPhone and some Nokia Lumia phones. So that's that really tiniest SIM that's on the market right now. Besides the front cameras that are used as sensors here, we have a regular 2.1 megapixel front camera that actually takes better than average pictures. For a 2.1 megapixel camera, here's a picture I took of myself. And, you know, usually the colors are pretty nasty, the detail's pretty bad, you get a lot of perspective distortion that makes, well, big nose people like me have even bigger noses. That's not so bad, really. The cameras on this are quite nice. The rear camera is a 13 megapixel camera with HDR, optical image stabilization, and a fast f2.0 lens. It takes really, actually, quite nice pictures. Now here's a picture taken in extreme backlight and you can see the yogurt cup's not showing up so much and when we turn on HDR it's got an almost supernatural colorful glow there. There's a lot of very good image processing going on here. It kind of reminds me of the iPhone in that respect. The camera doesn't have a whole lot of bells and whistles for features on it but it does a very good job of creating a sharp but not overly sharpened or overly watercolor looking picture and it brings out the colors very nicely. And there's a picture that looks almost artistic because it did such a good job of ca capturing the saturation of the oranges there and the inky black of the inside of the purse. So as a camera phone, I think this excels quite nicely. The phone also makes it real easy to take a picture and throw it into a message. If you're composing a message, you can swipe from the right side and actually get a picker of images and things you might want to include in your email message. So it may be a basic email client, but Amazon does a couple of nice things there to tweak that as well. 
For the web browser, we have Amazon Silk Web Browser, the same thing we've seen on Kindle Fire tablets. That's what we were using when we were showing the perspective motion there. We have portrait, the usual portrait and landscape modes. It's not a bad browser. JavaScript still tends to be the slowest thing. So the JavaScript elements of this page take the longest to load. Other than that, it's not bad. If you want to side load another web browser, more power to you. I can understand that. Amazon Silk uses a version of their caching software on the server, so anything that's a fairly popular site or page may be cached to try to speed up download times on this, assuming works just fine. So it's not a bad web browser. I think your average user is going to be happy. And again, the target market is not for you flagship buying real super smartphone knowledgeable people. It's kind of for everyday folks who are out there upgrading from a feature phone, moving away from a really old iPhone or an old Android phone. Lastly, battery life. 2400 milliamp battery sealed inside another unibody phone here so you're not going to be getting at that easily if you need to replace it let amazon know probably they have some replacement service a couple of years down the road when the, that actually becomes an issue the certainly modern lithium ion batteries do last a couple of years before they seriously degrade in terms of charging 2400 milliamps for a 720p screen and a quad core cpu that should be pretty adequate but battery life so far on this is just okay now part of that may be well, you've got all these cameras on the front working all the time. You've got a very bright display. Even though I have it set on auto, it, it tends to run fairly bright. And then maybe Amazon's going to have a couple of firmware optimizations. I've heard tell that they're going to work on that to try to improve battery life. But where the Galaxy S5, the iPhone 5S, all easily last me through a day on a charge with average use, where I'm not GPSing real heavily or playing a lot of 3D games, this guy will peter out for me at around 7 to 8 p.m. Hmm. The other thing about the phone is even with normal use, it gets pretty warm right up here by the Amazon logo. If you're playing a 3D game, it gets, well, I'm not going to say it's going to burn your skin off hot, but you're really going to feel it's going to give you a good case of the hand sweats. So I don't know if that's something that Amazon can ameliorate along with the battery life just being mediocre on this with a firmware update, maybe tune things down a little bit, but the, the CPU really must be just close to the other side of the glass here because you're going to feel it on this phone. A couple of other things to note that are different for those of you who are used to straight Android phones. The default search engine on here is Bing. It is not Google. Now you can add DuckDuckGo or other search engine apps to your liking, but that's just the way that it is. Amazon made a deal with Microsoft and not with Google for that one. So who is the phone for? I think it's pretty clear from what I've said. I think this is for more novice smartphone buyers who are really into Amazon's services. Do you buy your toilet paper from them? Do you watch Amazon Prime Video a lot? Are you totally into Kindle apps and want, want the Kindle reading application in your pocket, ready to go, smaller than a tablet? That kind of thing right there. you got your Audible books, as we covered. Well, this could be the phone for you. If you're an Android diehard who likes Android the way it works, thank you very much, and you want your Google Play services, which means Google Play Books, Google Play Magazines, Google Play App Store, all that kind of thing, not so much for you. If you're an iPhone person who's kind of bored with the iPhone or you're not real into the whole Apple experience, then this possibly could be for you if, again, you're a fan of the Amazon ecosystem. Obviously, it is geared towards, well, getting you to shop on Amazon, too, and it depends on how you feel about that. So that's the Amazon Fire Phone. It's available now if you're on AT&T in the United States. You can get it for the usual flagship price of $199 on contract or $299 if you want the higher storage capacity. And it's an interesting phone. In some ways, it's pretty compelling. It has a very usable UI. I actually like using it. I think it's pretty enjoyable. Obviously, for those of you who use Kindle Fire tablets, it's going to seem familiar, but... I, the big Amazon logo on the back says it all, not just the fact that it's very reflective and shiny here, but the fact that it's really geared towards selling you Amazon stuff. You know, should a phone be doing that? Only you can decide. If you're really that into Amazon that you like that, well, okay. Do the other features outweigh it? Not so much. It's very nice to use. It has a very lovely display and a pretty good camera inside, but again, it feels a little forced when it's trying to get you to shop all the time. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.